did putting together a couple of images of a slip. Probably won't be able to read it and I can nearly do it. After the storm we went out with spades and dug up something something the treasure and tried to dig up the treasure. So um, this is I'm really interested in using narrative and language in my work and kind of stories um, that come from sites and I was interested in how to put uh, emotion and stories into kind of actions. So, and also to talk about environmental issues without being kind of really boring or complainy about them. So what treasure um, or emotion you might find in this change. Um, I had a coming up with my flood project, I had um, kind of these two poles, the environmental thing and then the emotional thing, a flood as an environmental change, tears as an emotional change, and I have this little catchphrase in my head, which is a bit cheesy, but just people say when, you know, they break up with other people, oh, like, change is hard, change is very emotional, you know, it's a very emotional time, and I just thought if you expand that out into a whole community or a whole society, they're dealing with climate change, what kind of emotion um, might come from that. So uh, this is uh, an artist's representation of my work. I got my friend Billy to draw it because she's very good at diagrams. Um, probably can't read the writing, but it flood of tears, um, glass balcony, bags of onions, tears, spectators crying, glass tables. So this is what's going to um, happen when I put on my project in July. It will be um, inside in the basement of Capital E, which is a space that we found out recently does flood. And it all it's kind of very simple. There'll just be a ton of onions and uh, people will cut them up and other people will come and cry. Um, the un I mean, I was like, oh dear, I'm making food art maybe not such a good thing but um, I was just I wanted to make a flood and I was thinking about the best way to do it and a flood of tears seemed a really nice analogy and I was thinking how can you get to tears and as we all know onion, cutting onions is a good way to get to the tears um, so going back to uh, and obviously floods are things that occur in our society have always occurred and have a kind of a lot of history I mean a flood of tears was taken from the Alice in Wonderland story where she, so there's a lot of kind of connotations around floods. Um, another kind of place or event that I was thinking about when coming up with this work was uh, the kind of show of grief that occurred after Princess Diana's death and this kind of spontaneous event where people went and placed flowers outside Buckingham Palace and it became they were placing an object and kind of, I thought it was almost like they were displacing their grief, people who might have had events occur in their life that they hadn't really dealt with and then someone they didn't even know died and they, they, there was suddenly this huge outpouring of grief. So I'm quite, kind of interested in creating a forum where people might feel like crying and it might be because of the smell of onions or it might be because there's some other kind of grief in their life and they just, you know, they feel like they can come and, come and cry there. So going um, just briefly to conclude back to this idea of proximity, I was, I could have, I did have this thing where I was like, oh, I'd love to just put out a public call and tell people to bring like a friend and a knife and come to my project, but I thought, um, I thought that I didn't actually want to deal with that participation on such a huge <laughs> and danger on such a huge scale so I've decided to have um, kind of like the line the queuing work a cool group of people probably my friends and family cutting up the onions and then uh, and they, they, that's the participation will come from a proximity so then the audience will come in and uh, be kind of exposed to the smell and maybe can do a little bit of Themselves. But I really wanted to move away from getting this huge amount of participation and kind of the kind of organisational hassle, but also kind of reliance or need that you often get from trying to get huge amounts of people involved in a project. And
just have in, uh, the public be in such close proximity to the work that, um, that they had kind of a low physical um, and emotional response to it. Um, just briefly to uh, go back to um, Tina's and her discussion about the monuments, um, to me it's interesting because I think what I'm trying to achieve in this work is also kind of similar to what a, a war memorial might be trying to achieve in many ways. It's this um, a place and a space for people to have a certain emotional reaction. I find it quite interesting that I'm coming back to that same kind of response even though it's a obviously an ephemeral one day work rather than a huge monument. And also, as Tina, uh, Tina said, monuments being um, representing a past event for a future public feel like I would be trying to represent a future event, a future floods in the present. Thank you. 